This is an extremely rare phenomenon known as ball lightning. It lasts much longer than the split second of a lightning bolt, and it's still a complete mystery as to how it occurs. These people are experiencing so much atmospheric static electricity that their hair stands on end. While it looks fun, it actually is quite dangerous as it means lightning could strike in their area at any second. And they say lightning never strikes the same place twice. Thanks for watching. Much of the following explanation is adapted from Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman's lecture on physics, a section called Electricity in the Atmosphere. For every meter you go up in the air, the voltage increases by around 100 volts, or we could say around 100 volts per yard. We can draw these voltage increases using what are called equipotential lines. Notice that the ground is negative and the sky is positive with respect to each other. According to Feynman, this extends upward to 50 kilometers, or 31 miles, where the air is very conductive. This is the case in fair weather. In stormy weather, like a thunderstorm, things are quite different, and I won't talk about that here. But if this voltage exists between your head and the ground, why don't you get a shock? The reason is that your body is a good enough electrical conductor that standing on the ground, you're basically a part of the ground. The equipotential lines would look like this. There's still effectively zero volts between the top of your head and ground. Similar effects happen with trees, buildings, and so on. What about the electric current? The downward electrical current exists and consists of positive ions. Molecules are clumps of matter that have a positive charge. These ions are moving slowly toward the ground. The current density from these ions is very small, around 10 micro microamps, or 10 picoamps, crossing each square meter or yard every second. So in any small area, there's not a lot of power. And that's the explanation about atmospheric electricity adapted from Feynman's lectures. To take advantage of this atmospheric electricity, we electrically connect one end of a wire to the ground and lift the other end up into the air. In our case, we got good results at around 120 meters or 390 feet up. At 100 volts per meter or 100 volts per yard, that's 12,000 volts between that height and the ground. But just as with you standing on the ground, the wire is an electrical conductor and so is also at ground potential. Looking at the equipotential lines around the wire, that voltage of 12,000 volts exists between some distance away from the wire and the wire. You can see that the equipotential lines are closest together at the top of the wire. This means the attraction is strongest there and electrons make their way upward in the wire. Let's look more closely at the top of the wire. We'd put six sharp points using sewing pins at the top of that wire. But for ease of illustration, I'll draw just one. Notice that because of the sharp shape at the point, the charges are crowded together at that point. Remember also that there are positively charged ions in the air. An electric field exists between the negative charges on the wire and the positive charges in the air. And we can represent that electric field by drawing lines between pairs of opposite charges. Notice that the electric field lines are closer together near the point, meaning the electric field is stronger there. It's strong enough to remove the negative electrons from the sharp point, where they neutralize positive ions. But due to the voltage, there are fresh positive ions moving downward and fresh negative charges coming up from the wire. We now have electricity flowing through the wire. The electric current in that electricity is very weak though. We didn't measure it, but from my experience with electrostatics, I'd estimate it in the low microamps, or more likely even lower. That's not enough to turn an electromagnetic motor, one like you use in everyday life, 